Um, well, what are we supposed? What is the significance of the of the counting of the days? Pentecost. Another thought. Well, we know that's the ultimate. That's what Shavuot is. It took them that long to travel. Since the, traditionally mm -hmm. they got the Torah on Sinai, it took them that long to travel to Sinai. It is simply supposed to be our preparation for the receiving a of the commandments and b of the ruah. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be doing. And praying and, and, and counting the days, yes, and the barley crop would, would be brought to the synagogue in preparation, but the whole thing is preparing our hearts for these significant events. Uh, and um, so we've been preparing. Okay. Just looking. We're in. Oh, oh, great. There you go. Fantastic. Again, we're in numbers one, but we're starting over. We're in the Brit Hadasha reading of uh, Matthew 4, uh, 1, Matthew 4, 1 through 20, uh, or 1 through 17. And, uh, uh, but we were discussing initially that today is a significant day. And Rabbits and Linda mentioned that it is, that tomorrow is Shavuot. So what's been going on? leading up to that what have we been doing counting every day that's right that's exactly right and so today is day 49 all right so um and we'll discuss more briefly about that uh, during the commentary this morning but um so again the whole purpose of preparing our hearts just like we prepare our sap before uh, the days leading up to Passover. Okay, there you are. I fell asleep. <laughs> I've been out here since eight o'clock. Oh, is that your little yes yeah. with the flag? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. I, I, I don't know. I I call your wife. I said, "What time is it?" She said, "You way early, child." <laughs> so I went back and I went to sleep. <laughs> Rain does that. Arturo, we're driving three hours to go to synagogue. You are? <laughs> yeah. From Green Bay to Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Okay, good morning, Jay. Good right. morning. All right, so you're driving to a Messianic synagogue? Yes. Wow. What's it called? Uh, Beth, Beth Messiah. Bet the Messiah. Bet the Messiah. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful. So you're going to get a fill before you even get there. All right. So again, yes. um, Matthew 4, verse uh, 1. And before we even do that, let's pray. Amen. Father, we just come before you right now. Lord. We pray for traveling workers for Jeff, Jewel, as they travel to uh, Shul. Lord, we just lift you up and thank you and ask for a ring of protection around them. But Lord, uh, we're having stormy weather here, extremely. So um, we just pray for a ring of protection around us or anybody who might yet be en route. Um, we have a, a little tropical depression going on. So um, we just lift you up and praise you. Lord, um, we just uh, know that, that we are protected by you. So we lift you up and we thank you. Be with us as we open your word, Bami Dabar, this morning. And uh, we, we just ask for your presence, Lord. You are so faithful to be here each and every Shabbat, Lord, and to pour into us via your spirit, Lord, your Ruach HaKodesh. And we just thank you and praise you and lift you up in Yeshua's precious name. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 So Arturo is here, and uh, Sonny is logging in. Okay, great. All right, so again, Matthew 4. Who would like to read for us, Matthew 4? Shabbat shalom, Rabbi. Shabbat shalom, Arturo. Are you coming to service? Hey, 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 h
Turns. All right. <laughs> you said it from your lips to our ears. Yeah, and our arms are open to you. All right. Very good. Can you please join us at the table? Uh, yes. That, that yeah. chair doesn't have your name on it. Why not? Okay. I don't like my corner. Oh, okay. Uh, comfort. It's amazing how people go to the you know the same place when we come. People come to the synagogue. They always I sit, sit in the same, in the same place, place everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is the wife here this morning? No. All right, I'll take this one. Uh, this one's kind of high. It's good for me. Yes, sir. We raised it up for you. Ah, there we go. Next <laughs> time to get up, I don't got to do much work. That's right. <laughs> okay. Again, Matthew four is where we are, and uh, praise God. Samaric, Sonny, can you hear us? Sheila, if you would, please, okay. four, one. Overcoming temptation with God's word. Then Yeshua was led by the Ruach into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are Ben Elohim, tell these stones to become bread. Okay, for then, again, we're reading from TLB, for anybody who's not, Tree of Life version. Okay, so you are Ben Elohim. What does that mean? Son of God. Son of God. Ben is son of yes. Elohim is God. It's the same Elohim that is in the first line of scripture. The very first line of Genesis 1 1. Okay, where it says what? In the beginning, in the, God. In the beginning God. God. In the beginning, Elohim. And the significance of that is what? Anybody? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Elohim is a plural. Okay, Abba, Ben, Elohim, okay. Ruach HaKodesh, go ahead. But he replied, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, significant. Okay, but he replied, it is written. Okay, and I underline my words of either God and or Yeshua in red in my Bible. Okay, it doesn't mean everybody has to do that, but. I like to do that simply because it pops out at me. All right. So it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Is there anything about that that pops out at you? Oh, yeah. Riches and, you know, having so much materialistic things, it's inadequate. So every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, is what the most important thing is to us. Amen. All right, go on, Sheila, please. Then the devil took him into the holy city and placed him on the highest point of the temple. If you are Ben El Elohim, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall command his angels concerning you, and upon their hands they shall lift you up, so that you may not strike your foot against a stone. Okay, so Hasatan is quoting scripture. <laughs> His way. What? His way. Yeah, not thing. God's way. Not God's way. Mm -hmm. But but he's quoting scripture. So what do we know about Hasatan? So he knows the Bible the most. That's Christian right. He's do. been around longer than we've been. So you know. <laughs> he has the ability to twist it. Yeah. Just like he did Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Okay. All right. Uh so he said again, what did he say? Sure. Oh, so Yeshua said to him, again, it is written, you shall not put Adonai your God to the test. Again, the devil takes him to a very high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship mm -hmm. me. Then Yeshua says to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship Adonai your, your God and him only shall you serve. Let me ask you this, if you were portraying Yeshua on stage in a production right now, how would you say that line? Get behind me, get behind me Satan. Mm -hmm. What does he say here, exactly? And how would you say it if you were standing on stage? Worship me only or worship No, 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 I'm saying oh. if you're in front of an audience mm -hmm. and you got 2,000 people sitting out there mm -hmm. watching you on stage, you're playing the part of your sure. Mm -hmm. Say the line for me.
it exactly the way it is. <laughs> okay, just those words. Okay. With some oomph. With some oomph. Like what, Arturo? Read it. Like, oh, I don't have it in front of me, but something like "Be gone, Satan." You know, something with some, you know, vigor. Uh, <laughs> Go away, yeah. Satan. Yeah. yeah. Right. For it is written, "You shall worship Adonai for your God." And him only shall you serve. Amen. 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 This, this happens in our life. You think? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> well, you took the words right out of my mouth, bro. What, uh, so what is he saying here? What are, we, what are we reading thus far? Then the devil leaves him, and behold, angels came and began to take care of him. But again, what, what is the point? I mean, everything and we read, every word, every jot and tittle that's in scripture is important to minister to us. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so what were you going to say about that? Well, I had opportunities in my life to, you know, um, make, a, nice come, make a lot of, I had opportunities in my life to make a lot of money and screw people over or hurt people. And I, I didn't. I did. Ex I said those words because I read those words, and and uh, you know they were in my heart, they was in my mind. So I said no, and I said God, I know that if I take the other way, it's going to be hard. But you did say the the narrow road is the way to heaven, so I uh, walked away from things because I read these words and I believed in them. Amen. 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 All right, so again, uh, you know, I, I think I always remember for some reason when I flash back and when I first became a believer that at that point started to really read scripture. Um, and no matter where I turned in scripture, the words popped didn't matter i could literally open anywhere in the book and something would you know like bam hit me between the eyes so if you're reading for the first time and you're reading some of these things uh i always tell people when you before you read pray pray, pray. pray that the lord that the ruach would minister to you as you read so that in fact these words would uh, would fall on fertile soil. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Verse twelve, Sheila. Verse twelve. Now, when Yeshua heard that John had been handed over, he withdrew to the Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah, the prophet, saying, Land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people sitting in darkness have seen a great light, and those sitting in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From then on, Yeshua began to proclaim, Turn away from your sins, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Amen. 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 Lister, do those words sound familiar to you? <laughs> The people sitting in darkness of I see. great light. Isaiah. Yeah. Any other reason why they sound familiar? In a great the light. People today. sitting in darkness shall be a great light. Oh, yes, you. Those <laughs> 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 my lines in pageant, among oh, others. Uh -huh. Okay, standing, <laughs> yeah. being a Moses slash Isaiah slash Jeremiah. Okay, um, uh, looking like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jesus and Moses together. Yeah. Fine. Okay. But uh, so those words pop out at me because I had the privilege of reciting those lines. And, uh, and praise God, um, um, it was indeed a privilege. It, those words and reciting that was the, the purpose of my role in the Fort Lauderdale Christmas pageant of all things was to reunite, to bridge the gap between old and new, mm -hmm. okay? So when in fact the Roman centurion said, listen, you gotta go to the 
to the city of where your census would be taken. Okay, so uh, at that point, this prophet stepped on stage and started speaking in Hebrew. And uh, it was uh, essentially the beginning of my ministry, where in fact people were brought to me after the performance, uh, especially Jewish people, because of the cast of 2,000, or excuse me, 1,200 people. They knew that if they had Jewish visitors, that they would sick them on Peter after the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that comment. made such an impact on the Jewish audience. Well, it did, praise mm -hmm. God. Uh, and, and for 30 years, I did that part. Okay, and so it really was quite interesting for the people that were in fact brought to me at that point, or people that I had a chance to minister to in the lobby after the performance. Yeah. Uh, I have a comment on this yeah. picture too. Um, they, they like, I think it was Thaddeus who said, Nazareth, what good is in Nazareth? <laughs> And is anything good come out of that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They didn't know this prophecy. And also, I think I'm pretty sure it was the Pharisees like Nazareth. Yeah, nothing good mm. comes out of there because they didn't know this one that says a bright light is coming from Galilee of the nations. But Isaiah is boggles my mind. Not, not that anything that the Lord does doesn't boggle my mind, but this was 700 years before you show. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Bo, good morning. But this this is happening in this happened in our lives. We were once lost and we were found. Mm -hmm. And it's still happening today. Amen. Amen. So this 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 hasn't stopped. Yeah. Yeah. More than ever, we need it today. Mm -hmm. so those living great in the land of the here. shadow of death, upon them a great light has shined. Mm -hmm. And so those, you know, again, anybody who, who you have an opportunity to share with. Hopefully, you're going to be that great light. Amen. And God puts that light in the most unlikely places. Amen. And he uses the most unlikely mm -hmm. circumstances. people to bring that light to. Yeah. But if they miss out on the light of repentance, they're going to receive the light of judgment. That's the next light that's coming. Yeah. If you understand what I mean. Yeah. Yes. You understand what you mean. You know, I invited an autistic kid to the pageant with the community tickets. And he refused to leave until he, he could hug Jesus. And Jesus had been in the back, changed his clothes. He had to put his robe back on. <laughs> and when this kid saw Jesus, he lit, Jesus, Jesus, I just wanted to thank you. Oh, my God. Amen. Every time I see the I mother, we talk. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes, my God. because wow. the cast would, again, go to the lobby and meet mm -hmm. people in the lobby. And uh, one year, um, for the very first time, probably after we had been doing it for 10 plus years, um, Susan's sisters, sisters and brothers-in-law came down from Rhode Island. They had never seen the show. Wow. And uh, my one brother-in-law who dwarfs, makes me feel diminutive. <laughs> big guy. My <laughs> big guy. And this is a guy who um, converted to Catholicism in order to marry my wife's sister. He was a Baptist. <laughs> oh, and uh, whatever for the ladies. But when they finally came to the show, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, but, but welcome back for Rome. <laughs> but at the same point, I thank knew. You. I mean, this guy is hard, soft, and. Uh, we stood, we usually stood by the center door in the lobby. Everybody knew where I was after the show mm -hmm. consistently, 30 years. And, um, but we were waiting for them to come out and we waited and we waited. And as it turned out, they were waiting for everybody to leave because they were scouting out the seats, knowing, trying to figure out where they were going to sit next year. Oh my <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> 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 when I finally saw them coming up the aisle, my brother he was crying. Wow. Wow. And that was at a time when the uh, altar call at the end of the 
performance mm -hmm. was that everybody had a program. And if in fact, during the prayer that was said at the end of the program, people will ask to tear off the corner of the program and hand it in. So we know that oh, you prayed the prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how we did it at that, at that point yeah. in time. Mm -hmm. But by the time they came out, everybody was gone in the lobby. The cast was gone, the people were gone. Mm -hmm. you know, after all that milling around, because they were taking their time, there was only one other person in the lobby. Jesus. I was going to say. <laughs> Les. And uh, Les it was a, your friend who played the part of Jesus for years. That's the guy who was at the um, Holy Land. And he was also Jesus at the Holy Land experience yeah. for mm -hmm. years and years. Mm -hmm. Now he's too old to do that. But he was crucified three times a day. <laughs> we started to talk and, and he was obviously moved mm. rocked and I said to him would you like to meet Jesus <laughs> that makes such an impact on people's yeah. lives I'm telling you and Les truly looked the part and he was just 10 feet away. And I brought him over to meet him and he fell on his knees. Mm. Wow. And Les lifted him up and he said, do you know what that is? What you're feeling right now? And, and my brother-in-law said, no. He said, it's the Ruach HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. That's what he said, mm -hmm. literally, quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. I will not forget that moment. Mm -hmm. After that, and that was a matinee performance. That was a Sunday. And there was no evening performance. Mm -hmm. So the entire family met at a restaurant later on after that performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the wine was poured. And my brother-in-law lifted up the glass and said, here's to the tearing off of the corners. Oh my gosh. True repentance. I wish I could say that that was still the case. Be that as it may. You know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Yes. Numbers 1-1. One, one. Numbers 1-1. One, one. Okay. <laughs> in the wilderness of Sinai, on the first day of the second month in the second year from the exodus from the land of Egypt, Adonai spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting, saying, do a head count of all the community of B'nai Israel by their families and their ancestral house, with a total of every male, one by one. You and Aaron are to muster by their divisions every son from 20 years and upward available to serve in the army of Israel. One man from each tribe, each head of his father's household, is to assist you. These then are the names of the men who assist you from Reuben and Elizur, Elizur, son of Shador, from Simeon, Shal Shalmiel, son of Zer Zerushadai, from Judah, Nashan, son of Aminadad, from Issachar, Nathaniel, son of Zor, from Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helon, from the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, son of Am Amahud, from Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Pedasor, from Benjamin, Abaddon, son of Gideon, and from Dan, Ahizer, son of, yeah. of Amishadai, from Ashar, Pegael, son of Agron, from Gad, Elisaf, son of Duel, from Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enon. These were those selected from the community, princes of their ancestral tribes. They were heads of the thousands of Israel. So Moses and Aaron took these men designated by name. They assembled all the community on the first day of the second month. They declared the lineage according to their families, the households of their forefathers, with the number of the names of those 20 years old and upward being listed individually. Moses numbered Israel in the wilderness of Sinai, just as Adonai had commanded him. The sons of Reuben, Israel's firstborn. Okay, and when you uh, read now the next section. Yeah. Okay, read the tribe and the number. That's all. 
Okay. So yeah. from the sons of Reuben, and what's at the very end of the paragraph? Okay. The the what count is that? The how many? Okay, oh, 46,500. Okay. The, the tribe of Simeon, 59,300. Tribe of Gad, 45,650. The tribe of Judah, those counted from the tribe of, of Judah were 74,600. The tribe of Issachar, 54,400. The tribe of Zebulun, 57,400. Tribe of Joseph, 40,500. Tribe of Manasseh, 32,200. Tribe of Benjamin, 35,400. The tribe of Dan, 62,700. Tribe of Asher, 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 Asher 41,500. The tribe of Naphtali, 53,400. The tribe of Moses. Well, at the end of that paragraph says yeah, 600,000. Okay. Wow. Okay. And again, not to again to make less of all the words that were spoken, but there's a lot of repetition there for the sake of our time. Okay. But again, what do you think God's purpose is? Because there's a purpose in everything that we look at here of spelling it out tribe by tribe, number by number. Okay. Again, those 20 years old and upward being listed individually, Moses numbered Israel in the wilderness of Sinai just as Adonai had commanded him. What would be the purpose of that? To know how many people are entering the promised land. Okay. That's, I, that's a thought. I see in verse three it says that um, you're to muster by their divisions every son from 20 years and upward available to serve in the army of Israel. Okay. All right. Sort of to so, encourage them that they have a big number of people available to go and conquer the Canaanites and Ites and Ites and Ites. It is absolutely true. I mean, when they ultimately will take Egypt, and um, it is made clear that the Lord could have taken them on a very clear path to the promised land, but he didn't. He walked them all the way around a different path altogether. Why? Because he had to, he had to give them the laws, his, you know, the instructions. Mm, not yet. Stephen. Uh, the, the Israelites, you mean? Yeah. Um, because there were members of the Israelites who were still uh, you know, doing the idol worship. When Moses went up on the mountain to speak to God, they, they backslid and they took all the gold and valuables and everything that they had brought with them from Egypt and they made idols. They made, you know. But they, even before that, see, oh. when they first mm -hmm. Egypt, okay, and they were walking was, into the wilderness. Because they were complaining, oh, we had it so much better you know, they, well, they, they but, were going to run away. They, they were not fighting, and right. God was afraid that they would scatter and, you know, okay. you know, we them. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm in sorry, fact, they were. That's all right. Rabbi, were, sorry, were what's, the question? what's the question? I can't, I couldn't hear the question. What's the question? The question was, why did the Lord walk them in a roundabout pattern coming out of Egypt and yeah. not take a direct route. Yeah. Okay, because as Lystra said, years. okay, they were not ready mm -hmm. because of 400 years of slavery Amen. to do battle. No. Understand? So now what is he doing? He's toughening them up. Well, he's saying we need to prepare for these things. That's right. right. Preparing them. All right. Seizing their spirituality. You know, you know. The other thing that I see, it, it may seem like unrelated, but the, the thing that I say, I think this is the really the only place in scripture where we have a, um, a like, a, let's say like a census, right? You, you, you know, an accounting of how many people. Okay. So, so, so for me, it just, you know, uh, I'm looking at this in a way of like, well, wow, this is just a number of men. Right, which it's a lot of it's a lot of men, and just the number of men from each tribe 
equals like city population, town po populations of towns, right? You know, like that in the fur population of towns, let alone, the, you know, um, the additional people of their families, you know. It's so, 603,000 men. Men. And how many do we know were actually there in the desert? We, we we don't we can make some try to make some guesses based so it's on clear, it's been pretty clear how many there were oh the total oh, they're total i'm oh, sorry if there, it says there are 603 men but i'm looking at the total, the total, yeah, those total men, is even more those were men who were 20 years and older older so how many people were there all together that actually left egypt and were there in the wilderness uh, what two million how many Two million. Two million. Two million. Okay. Okay. Them's a lot of folks. <laughs> yes, and that's part. That's part of my point is we get an idea of how big you know the of the population was back in the time. I think without the numbers, we'd have no idea. It's just okay. Right. There's no sense of how many people you know. That's a lot of people. Oh, well, yeah, two five back to zero. Okay. She like, what is that? Timing is everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All of a sudden, the music kicked in. Know. Know. <laughs> uh, I thought we were all supposed to get up and dance. Yeah, I was ready. <laughs> so, okay. So again, there's a lot of conjecture about this. We read it and all the details. Um, flag each tribe, um, and each tribe was under a banner. Okay, and the banner was of a particular color. What color would that be? I don't remember. Uh, Each tribe had their own color. Mm -hmm. Is that in the scripture? Yeah. Yeah. Colors in the scripture. Would that be from the stones on the ephod? Precisely. Okay. Exacto mundo, as my friend the Fonz would say. <laughs> Excuse me, what did Linda say? The same the tribe color in the banner was the same color as the stone on the breastplate of the priest. Representing oh, each one. That's why he wore that breast. Correct. Oh, yes. Presented a tribe. Okay. So had his tribe carried on his heart into the presence of God. Amen. Okay. So, um, per the uh, the midrash, the Talmud, the oral tradition, uh, the stone followed the encampment. Okay, the stone. What stone are we talking about? This is an aside. It was a stone that followed them through the desert. Cedric? They followed a stone or stone the followed stone them? followed them. Oh. Where else do we talk about the stone? Well, it's the chief, you show us the chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone, okay, but there's another stone that's spoken of, especially as it relates to Moshe. Moses, Moses. Uh, oh, the stone that was laid aside. The water had. with the stone. The water with the stone. Oh, that's right, right, right. right. He, he banged his staff on this rock. Instead of speaking to it, he struck it. Uh, okay, that stone pulled them from encampment to encampment. Oh. Physically. Oh, okay. okay. God can do anything he pleases. Amen? Amen. He created everything. Let's pick this up. Duties of the Levites in particular. Okay, we're at verse, we're at numbers one, verse 47. And again, how much is required to maintain all the order in the desert? You got two million people. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did Adonai provide daily for these people? Manna. Okay, manna. manna. All mm -hmm. right, for 47, please, Sheila. The Levites, however, were not counted by the tribe of their ancestors, for Adonai told Moses, saying, definitely you are not to number the tribe of Levi, uh, nor take the sum, the sum of them among B'nai Israel. Instead, you are to appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all its implements and all pertaining to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its utensils, tend to it, and camp around it. Whenever the tabernacle sets out, the Levites are to dismantle it, and whenever the tabernacle is pitched, the Levites are to set it up. But the commoner, 
who comes near to it must be put to death. Ouch. Go ahead. So the Jews Israel will encamp, each man with his own camp, each with his own standard, according to their own divisions. The Levites are to camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, so that there will be no wrath unleashed on the community of the Nay Israel. Okay, so, hold it, hold it right there. Okay. Okay. Um, one second. Just a moment. Show and tell. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I know I never hear someone. I thought I did. Okay, what I was looking for was a picture of the tabernacle and the Israelites in their respective. Okay, great, thank you. You're awesome. Okay. Um, all right. So here's a, a picture of the tabernacle. Lister just happens to have it here. Okay. And the tribes encamped around it. But what it doesn't necessarily show is if in a particular formation, okay, of how they were encamped around it. Okay. Well, that's, right, that's right, by tribe. There is by tribe, precisely. What happened to the rabble that left Egypt with them? Where were they camped in camp? Oh, they were amongst the people. They were amongst the people too. Uh, so but they, you're right. There was a large number of Egyptians. Yes. That left. Oh, okay. okay, because it does refer to them as a mixed multitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, D. Question. I have a picture. Okay. Uh, All right. So. I, I can't see it very clearly. Okay, but what does it show the specifically about the encampment around the tabernacle? Uh, the encampment, yes, it does. Yeah, I can't I can't really see can it. Can you see it? Can you see it there? Can you describe it to us? Can you tell us a bit what about it says around there? Right, what it says and what it says the tribes. On the on the on the east was the tribe of Isahar. Okay, uh, D nice and loud so everybody can hear. You're right, go ahead. Uh, on the, the tribe on of Issachar, go ahead. On the east was the tribe of Issachar, or maybe the, you can see this other picture. No, oh, I can't see it. D. That's okay, better. That was, Basically, but, but if you would read it, that would be better. Okay. Uh, the tribe of Issachar on the east, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Zebulun, and on the north, it was the tribe of Naphtali, Naphtali, Asher, Dan. On the on the west was the uh, the tribe of God, Simeon, and Reuben. And on the on the south, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm I'm saying it wrong. No, 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 that's okay. God, Simeon, and Reuben. Okay, and then and on the south was uh, uh, God, Simeon, and Reuben. On the west it was Ephraim. Man, Manasseh, 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 and Benjamin. Benjamin, okay. <laughs> all right, so we have all, all 12. Okay, surrounding, and I have it here. Thank you again, Lystra. Okay, uh, but essentially, you have a cross. Wow. A cross. Okay, a cross surrounding. Yes. And when they moved, through the desert from location to location, they moved in that formation as a cross. Okay, and when in fact the uh, the uh, Shekinah glory, okay, the spirit of the Lord picked up and decided to move, then at that point every Levite knew exactly where he needed to go. Okay, who had to carry this? Who had to take that? Who had rolled up what ten peg? Who carried the pots and pans and and everything? The offering and the incense? Who carried the sheep? The, the sheepskin? The, uh, the seal skin? That one of had seal skin. Okay, go figure. 
Okay, seal skin to put over the top because it was waterproof. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. So just as amazing as there was a rock that followed them through the desert. Okay, so everybody had an exact station. It was like being aboard a naval ship during battle stations. When that battle station sound blew across the ship, bam, every sailor ran to his battle station to know exactly where they were supposed to be. Okay. When I was on a ship, okay, my, I was a musician. My battle station was my bed. <laughs> we strapped ourselves into the bed. Okay, that was before, that was at the beginning. So when Something do you, else later. What? When do you do your job? When do I do my job? Anytime anything will happen. Oh, anytime someone dies. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Okay. That's a fact. Yeah. Okay. Can I make a comment on yes. the rabble that you mentioned? Lisa? I'm thinking that because the God used the Israeli people, that was the only way to get to the true God back before mm -hmm. Yeshua came, that they would have had to join one of the tribes. That's my guess. Yeah. You know? So they would have they would have attacked themselves somewhere. Whatever tribe they, they were close to or yeah. lived close by. So the Levites rewarded with mm -hmm. care of the Mishkan to care for the holy things called my God into his service. And we are all <coughs> unfit until called by his grace to have fellowship with Yeshua the Messiah. Mm, okay, in other words, not only did they all have jobs, but if anybody decided this arbitrarily to jump in on the wrong job, or if you were not a Levite, the same way that the two sons of Aaron were taken out for doing things the wrong way. And Amen. wasn't it Uzzah who touched the ark on the cart? Correct. Because mm -hmm. David didn't obey scripture. He followed the Philistines' example of putting it on a cart. Mm -hmm. and Instead of carrying it died. as it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Right. And it started to fall and they reached up to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a religious sect in Israel today that claims to be the descendants of the Levites? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think they're one of the few. Well, if you know anybody Israelite named Cohen, DNA they, the most they are descendants. Yeah, Cohen. The most powerful ones today in, no, in Israel. No, no, with the Sanhedrin. Yes, yeah, Mona. Same with the cats is. Okay. What's the cats? Yeah. Cats is our Cohen. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Last name is Cats. So I mean, where does that come from? Like Kohath or a uh, Kohanim? Kohanim. Yeah. Yes. Kohen. Kohen. Whose name is Cohen? C O H E N, mm -hmm. or some variation thereof. So Kohen is back, a variation. I'm, I'm, I'm. I was not aware of that. I'll tell you. Even, and even I can some of the names, the name Levi as well. Correct. Even those that have the surname Levi, right? Okay. One second. Yes. Sir. That's true. Mona, you were saying. Yes. Yeah, so Katz is a is a combination of Kohen and Sadik. And what? Sadik. Sadik. Okay. Sadiq. As a righteous. Righteous. Yeah. Righteous one. The, okay. The, yeah. So, so the Sadiks. Yeah. Weren't they? Um. There was. Weren't they some sort of? I don't know. Say leader. Lack of a better. You know. They had some sort of. Yeah. Titles or position positions, you know, so it's a combination of those of those two. Um, I don't know. I'd have to research it some more now that I probably Both will now that this came out. Back then ran the local delegate. Right, 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 right. Right. So yeah, right. It goes away, way, way, but you know, way, way back. Okay. <laughs> Which one are the most powerful ones in Israel today? Well, Sanhedrin are still the ruling body. Sanhedrin? Sanhedrin, and what tribe would that be from? They're not a tribe specifically. They're like appointed rulers, um, ministers. But again, it's a political position. But they the same way from... that during the time of Yeshua, the 70 who were ruling at the time were more, the majority of them were Roman appointees, had nothing to do with any kind of spiritual calling at all. Okay, and that's why many of them were. Uh, so anti Yeshua, because Yeshua was upsetting the apple cart mm. and and causing them, you know people saying let's follow him and not that the Pharisees the Pharisees but the lines of the Pharisees comes their Jewish lines right bloodlines yeah it doesn't make but them the right. Pharisees aren't necessarily Cohen 
Right. Right. Oh, right, right, Rabbi. They're not necessarily, uh, you know, from the tribe of Levi, you know, so. Right. Right, because okay. um, Saul was Saul. a Pharisee, and he was say. from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin. Right. Yeah, so that's that's you got to be from some some form of bloodline, which has to be Jewish people. One, uh, Jewish people is. Yeah, but we're looking at the Levites trying to see. Right. They... Okay. Mm. Can I Guys, let's. Yes, yeah, sure, go ahead. Question from before. So they would blow the shofar when it was ready for everybody to move? Two million people. Mm. They didn't need to blow the shofar. No. Okay, because the light, the Shekinah glory. That's okay. right. Right, right, right. Oh. Okay. Uh, the cloud by day is pillar of fire by night. Okay. Okay. They, when it decided to get up and move, they ran. Okay. All right. Literally. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. And again, assume the formation in those. Yeah. They had to pick everything up and go. Interesting. Amen. Yes. All right. Uh, chapter two. We are. Challenged by time here. Okay, order of ancestral household, Sheila. Adonai said to Moses and Aaron, saying, Let each man encamp under his own standard among the banners of their ancestral house at an appropriate distance around the tent of meeting. Those camping on the east toward the sunrise will be of the standard of Judah, according to their divisions. Nachshon, son of Amenadad, is the prince of the sons of Judah. His division by their number is 74,600. Okay, let's do what we did before. Okay. okay. Verse five. Verse five. So, you want me to get the name for sons of yeah, Issachar? Yeah, just read the first line and the number. Okay, camping next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar. Okay. And that was 50, 57,400. Right. 54. Judah's camp. Okay. Uh, 186,400. Reuben was somewhere there. It would be 46,500. Yep. Was camping next to Miss Simeon. 59,300. Gad, 46,000, 45,650. Okay. And all 16, those, you're right. Okay. All those numbered to the camp of Reuben are 151,450. They are to set out second. Then the tenth of meeting will move out with this camp of the Levites, which is in the middle of the camps, just as they were in camp. Each person in his own place under his own appropriate standard. Okay, so again, here we are as what was just described, and then the picture that was just provided for us. Okay, 18. On the west will be the standard of the camp of Ephraim by their divisions. The prince of the sons of Ephraim, Elishama, son of Amahu, his division by their numbers is 40,500. Should I do it, Manasseh? Yes. Okay, Manasseh, and then it would be 32,200. And then Benjamin is 35,400. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those numbered to the camp of Ephraim are 108,100 by their divisions. Uh, Dan is uh, 62,700. And Asher is 41,500. Mm -hmm. Naphtali is 53,400. Somebody's at the door. Yeah. <laughs> Who is it? She was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All those numbered to the camp of Dan are 157,600. Numbers uh, of Bnei Israel is 603,550. And however, the Levites were not counted among Bnei Israel, just as Adonai commanded Moses. So Bnei Israel acted in accordance with all that Adonai had commanded Moses. Thus, they camped by their standards and set out, each man according to their families and their ancestral houses. Okay, so the model for the Besara. Besara translates. You've heard you've it many times. Yes, you have. Oh, good news. Good news. Oh, yes. Otherwise known as gospel. Okay, Besara. Okay, thus a model for the gospel. The church, all knowing and keeping their place, and all uh, and rejoicing, they did what they did with a glad heart. Mm. Okay, it wasn't like oh here we go again. Okay, it was they did joyfully because they they knew who was in charge. All right, and again, it says, uh, however, the Levites were not counted among Bene Israel. As I don't know, I commanded Moses, why not? I told him not to do it. 
Well, not just for that was apart. the reason they were set apart. Okay, they were not to have anything to do with anything except what was holy. Period. They not they were set aside strictly for the things of God, and not to have any other um, other task. Okay. It makes me think about um, David was not allowed to build the temple of God because he was a man of blood. So the Levites weren't to be counted among the armies because they were not to be men of blood. Precisely. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Okay. So uh, again, uh, okay. Uh, in chapter two, let's see here. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, chapter three now, Levi families and duties. Okay. These are the generations of Aaron and Moses, current at the time Adonai spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai. These are the names of Aaron's sons, Nadab, the firstborn, Abihu, or Eleazar, and Edomar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed Kohanim, whom he con consecrated to be priests. But Nadab and Abihu died before Adonai, for offering unauthorized mm -hmm. fire before Adonai in the Sinai wilderness. They had no children. So Eleazar and Edomar served as Kohanim under Aaron, their father. Then Adonai spoke to Moses saying, gather the tribe of Levi near and appoint them to attend to Aaron the Kohen. They are to keep watch over duties for him and the entire community before the tent of meeting while performing their service of the tabernacle. They are to tend to all the implements of the tent of meeting and the service of B'nai Israel while performing the service of the tabernacle. You are to give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. Out of B'nai Israel, they are dedicated entirely to him. You are to appoint Aaron and his sons to maintain the priesthood. Any commoner who approaches must be executed. Ouch. Go ahead. Then Adonai said to Moses, saying, See, I have taken the Levites from among B'nai Israel in place of the firstborn who opened the womb among B'nai Israel. The Levites will be mine because all the firstborn are mine. In the day when I was striking down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated to myself every firstborn in Israel, whether man or animal, as mine. I am Adonai. Okay, again, to reiterate, the Levites were chosen for this position because why? Why did you choose that particular tribe? <clears throat> He chose them, the firstborn. Well, he chose them simply because when, in fact, there was that rebellion in the desert, they did not. They didn't rebel, they didn't, they didn't join you. Yeah. No. Oh, that's why. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. That was the first separation of the people. Correct. That rebellion. Oh. So they proved themselves faithful. Right, precisely. Okay, reading on uh, 17. Is that mm, I, I think it's 14. 14. I don't know. I spoke in the Sinai well, wilderness to Moses, saying, Count the sons of Levi according to their ancestral house by their families, every male a month old and upward. He ought to number them. So Moses numbered them in accordance with the word of Adonai, just mm -hmm. as he was commanded. These were the sons of Levi by their names Gershon, Kohat, and Merari. These then were the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni and Shemai. The sons of Kohat by their families were Amron, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Morari by their families are Mali and Mushi. These were then were that the, was a, the, the Japanese division. <laughs> Mushi. Mushi. Uh, These then were the families of the Levites by their ancestral households. Okay. okay. So again, they're identifying all of these. Okay, and before we forget, I really would like you to contemplate. You know, normally when you read Numbers 1-1, one, one, we read about all the divisions and because of time, we skipped over certain things and kind of abbreviated here. But if we understand that everything is here for a specific reason, can we chew on that for a minute? Absolutely. <clears throat> I never liked the numbers. I used well, again, when we get to the numbers, you and a lot of other people. Yes, I don't read it. I know. Mm -hmm. 
Which is wrong. Because, it is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because, but, um, and I would like you very carefully to listen to the commentary this morning in regards to this. Mm. Okay, but there's me, a very specific reason. Go ahead. It makes me think about how God cared about the the tribes here and and knew the number of each one and he mm -hmm. cares about each one of us too mm -hmm. so so um precisely you know he knows when a sparrow falls off of a mm -hmm. branch and he cares about us Amen. much more Very each good. one Linda, of us thank you awesome so when I look at this and it's boring, I'm thinking, okay, but Lord, you <laughs> care about that yeah, detail. Yeah. You care about the details in my life mm -hmm. too. I know he cares him. about the details in my life, but too many numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I am guilty. Now that you understand, and again, listen, listen yes. to the commentary. I am, I am. Okay. But Maybe that's why he sent me here today. Yeah. You know, and if you want to believe, it, I'll believe it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I like the point that Linda made. It was making me think, you know, so I do, you know, bookkeeping, accounting, right? And, you know, to most people, it's just data, but, it, but each number, each penny, each zero means something. And if it's not correct, it has to be correct, right? It, it, it's all very precise. You know, now, do I have to know what it all means? means in terms of you know, yeah and well and yes i mean i have to know what it all means where did it come from you, you know every single it's very very detailed but on the on the surface it looks like data and it reminds me was it those holograms was it 20 30 years ago you had those pictures that are just gobbledygook but if you sit there and you you stand there and you watch it long enough that you could see a whole picture you know so that to me is kind of even like the scriptures can be like that right it's just you know the and the surface it may not seem like it's anything but if we sit and dwell on it it, it tells us a whole lot you know by detail to the to the jot and the tittle <laughs> what created man in his own image first man first person was Adam. Uh, who had all his own specific identities created with a purpose in mind, okay? Had nothing to do with anything, what race or anything okay, at all. It was from first man, first woman, okay? And uh, beyond the of the fall that was created by them or because of uh, Hasatan, um, again, taking it down from generation to generation. We are all from one man. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so think about that in terms of taking a census of everybody who's out there. Okay, um, and what the ultimate purpose is from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so please listen carefully to that commentary this morning. I, I, in my research, uh, I found a really interesting perspective on that. It kind of mm -hmm. puts a whole different light on everything. Okay, it, it would be important for us. And in actuality, there's a lot that's said about that in the Talmud, in the oral tradition. Okay, there's a lot about the Talmud that's extreme, extremely interesting. Uh, some of it is just just that. Okay, it, it's not from God; it's from man. Mm. But many, much of it is is extremely insightful. Okay, Rabbits and Jackie, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Great, thank you. Glad you're here. Glad you're on. Okay. But can I make a very, very quick, very, very quick comment before we go on? So the other thing too is, you know, um, with understanding the scripture, like I know it's impossible, you know, we can't understand every jot, every tittle, you know, like this is just so vast, right? We can't understand it all. But, uh, but the point that I want to make is that in accounting, everything has to, if something is wrong, it's not in balance. It's not reconciled. It's off. 
You know, so it's the same thing with, I want to just make the point is the same thing with understanding the word. We have to understand it rightly, whatever, right? You know, otherwise we're off. <laughs> Precisely. Which is why, why we do this, okay? Because a lot of people are not, call themselves quote unquote religious, and they're not reading this, hmm. they're reading Talmud, which again is the word of man. Man has a tendency to be off. Okay, off the way of inventing, you know, even if it comes to uh, the the uh, the uh, dietary laws, for example. Okay, we try to follow the dietary laws as it says here. It says, don't eat shrimp, uh, don't eat shellfish, mm. okay, don't eat pork. So we don't. Okay, I'm not inclined to eat camel or snake. Okay. <laughs> Because, but that's what it says not to do here. But again, if you're following rabbinical law, it says don't eat meat and dairy at the same time. It doesn't say that here in any way, shape, or form. In fact, when Abraham was visited by Hashem and his two angels on their way to to Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. what did he feed them? Way. Birds. Hurts and my case. So again, um, that doesn't change. Men change. Men change. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, sir. Yeah. The dietary laws are meant for like, don't you know, just go out high and eat it. You know, like, um, what if it like a, a like you're in a situation where it's kind of all you have to survive on? Is that different or like say? It's, it's between you and God, Stephen. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, personally, I don't think it has anything to do with your salvation. Okay. Yeah. Because Amen. David David did something similar. Yes. So. Okay. And on the Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And ate the wheat in the field. The bread of the priest. Right. One right. Showbread. Okay. No bread. No bread. Okay. Okay. So. Um, all right, so again, let's jump ahead. Uh, I'm out of time. Yeah, I've got to okay, go. Okay, we're verse three, um, Levites, okay. chapter three. I'm passing it along. Okay. I'll read. Go ahead. Well, okay. You're right. from yeah, but, uh, unfortunately, but, I have to leave. Okay. You guys can stay here. All right, if you'd like to carry on. Uh, we're, we're a good verse three, chapter three, or chapter four, before we get to the end. Okay, in four. We ended for okay. So if you'd like to read on there, that would be great. Okay. My father, I just praise you and I thank you for all in attendance today. Either physically or virtually, either way, Lord, we praise you and thank you for the uh, reading of the word, Lord, today. We lift you up and exalt you. Be all over this service today. Be all over the 49th day of the coming of the Omer, Lord. And tomorrow as we celebrate Shavuot, a momentous day. Lord, we lift you up and thank you in the precious name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen, amen, amen. 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 All right, all. Continue all right. to read. All right. Quick question. You mentioned the rock following the camp, and I don't remember that in scripture. Where, where yeah, is that from? Uh, yeah, it's, I'll have to find that. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I believe it's there. Okay. Uh, and again, mentioning these, that we just mentioned it here. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Man, I can I tell the future? Yeah. Good to go. Yeah. yeah. The seat uh, position feels the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. A couple different positions. Uh, Jarrett is the keeper of the chariot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we don't Plus rely on horses and chariots. So. Cherry. Oh. All right. so the Levite families and duties. These are the generations of Aaron and Moses, current at the time of Adonai. Current at the time Adonai spoke to Moses of Mount Sinai. These are the names of Aaron's son, Nadab, the firstborn, Abihu, Elysia, Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron. The anointed Kohanim, whom he consecrated to be priests. But Nadab and, Abu, and, Ab, Abihu. and Abihu died before Adonai for of 
offering unauthorized fire before Adonai in the Sinai wilderness. They had no children, so Elysia and Ithamar served as Kohamin under Aaron and their father. Then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Gather the tribes of Levi near and appoint them to attend to Aaron the Kohen. They are to keep watch over duties for him and the entire community before the tent of meeting while performing the service of the tabernacle. They are to tend to all the implements of the tent of meetings and the service of Benai Israel while performing the service of the tabernacle. <laughs> you are to give the Levites to Aaron and his son. Out of Benai Israel, they are dedicated entirely to him. You are to appoint Aaron and his sons to maintain the priesthood. Any commoner who approaches must be executed. Then Adonai said, said to Moses, then Adonai said to Moses, say, see, I have taken the Levites from among Benai Israel in place of the firstborn who opened the womb among Benai Israel. The Levites will be mine because all the firstborn are mine. In the day when I was striking down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated to myself every firstborn in Israel, whether man or animal, as mine, I am Adonai. So is that why the Levites, they are all firstborn? They, they, that's why uh, they no. were chosen because no, they were we said born. because they didn't rebel at the and time. They didn't rebel, but then they're saying here, see, I have taken the Levites from among Benai Israel in place of the firstborn who opened the womb among Benai Israel. As an exchange. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of taking the firstborn, he mm -hmm. was going to take the Levites mm -hmm. to be his okay. to be his own. Oh. Okay, thanks. And because the firstborn God called as dedicated to himself. Yes, set so apart. That, yeah, yeah, from all of Israel. Yes. And so as an exchange that the Israelites wouldn't have to dedicate their firstborn oh, son okay. well, to, the, to the Lord, hmm. then he has the Levites in place of okay. all of the firstborn in Israel. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and the uh, Orthodox today still have some ceremony that do the same thing for you know their firstborn males in addition to a circumcision. Yeah, hey, you dedicate them to the Lord, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, and redeem the yeah. redemption. <clears throat> Most uh, the should I say Christian or even the Catholic Church do the same thing. They dedicate the child when they're born. No, they, right, but the, the they, firstborn in particular, oh, but they, they, in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. yeah, they're Christian children. They don't they're all the children, but this that's that, that's in a sense that's 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 a practice in and of itself. But but this is specifically regarding the firstborn, the firstborn males. So in Judaism, um, the uh, you know they do the same thing, right? All the, all the children get you know there's like a dedication for all the children. But there's something, a, 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 you know, something let's say special, different that they do in it to the with the firstborn male. In addition, like uh, addition to a regular dedication. Gotcha. Oh, okay. okay. Adonai spoke in the Sinai wilderness to Moses, saying, "Count the sons of Levi according to their ancestral house by their families. Every male among upward, you ought to number them." So Moses numbered them in accordance with the word of Adonai, just as he was commanded. These were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. These were the, these then were the names of the sons of Gershon by their families, Libni and Shemai. The sons of Kohath by their families were Amran, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The sons of Merari by their families, Amali and Mushi. These were the families of the Levites by their ancestral houses. Stop a second. I have a thought. Um, up in verse 15, I thought this kind of was interesting. It says, count the sons of Levi, every male a month old and upward, you're to number them, or before it was over 20. Oh, good point. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so I thought that when God calls people to serve him, he's like we say, we don't have a junior Holy Spirit. He uses children. Mm. I think that's sort of an interesting pointing out here, you know, that he used the Levi children. He, they were dedicated to him, even mm. the children. Mm. But, but I, when I see though what the difference is, you know, between the two countings is that this is just, it looks, I, if I'm catching right, this is just, a, this is a regular census. 
versus the one previously is for the uh, let's say the arm, you know, the arm, the soul, you know, the county of the army. Well, it so, was the, it was the when the people rebel against God for not entering the land from with milk and honey. They still had that mentality of slavery. God was angry with them, but that's you talking about. Uh, I'm just, I'm just referring to the point that uh, Linda brought out is you know in terms of just the county you know the counting of the 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 age at which they're counted as a cent as part of the census. So you have a regular census, right? You know, here in this country, we have a census every ten years. You get that form in the mail, you know, of confirming you're still alive, right? So, but then, so there's a regular census, which is this. This is, you know, in this particular scripture, is a regular census. But earlier, with all the countings of the tribes, that's for the counting of the for the army. You know, who was who, what males were accounted for for the army in Good particular. Point. Good point. Is it is that? Yeah. That jive? Yeah, yeah. I, what I was thinking, since God specifically said the other tribes were for his army, mm -hmm. and he, the purpose here, certainly children aren't for the army, so I don't think that's <laughs> right. No, no, I'm just saying this is just more of a regular census, but, you know, they're yeah. just different types of censuses. That's all I'm saying. I'm just pointing out they're, they're, they're for different purposes. That's the census that these these two, um, you know, censuses, they're different types of, you know, for different reasons. That's all I'm saying. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So Goshan belonged to the family of the Libnites and the family of the Shemites or the Shemites. These were the families of the Goshanites. The number of every male, one month old and upward, who were counted was 7,500. The Goshanites were to camp behind the tabernacle on the west. Prince of the ancestral house of the Gushanites was Elisa, son of Lael. The duties of the sons of Gushan in the tent of meetings were the tabernacle, the tent, its co coverings, the curtain of the entrance of the tent of meetings, the curtains of the courtyard, the screen of the entrance of the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar, its ropes and all related to its use. To Kohath belonged the family of the Amramites, the family of the Isherites, the Lebronites, and the Uzzielites. These were the Kohathite families. The number of every male, one month old and upward, was 8,600. Their duties were caring for the sanctuary. The Kohathite families were to camp along the side of the tabernacle on the south. The prince of the ancestral household of the Kohathites was Elisaphan, son of Uziel, and these were responsible for the ark, the table, the menorah, the altars, and the implements on the, of the sanctuary used in service with them, the curtain and all involved with its use. The chief prince of the Levites was Elisia, son of Aaron, the Kohen pointed over those whose responsibility was the care of the sanctuary. To Merari belonged the families of the, the Malhites and the Moshites. These were the families of Merari. Their number by count of every May, one month old and upward was 6,200. The prince of the household of the father of the Mer the, Mer the Merarites was Su Suriel, son of Abihel. They were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle. The sons of Merari were appointed over the care of the frames of the tabernacle, its crossbars, post spaces, and all the equipment for its use. The posts of the surrounding courtyard, their bases, pegs, and ropes. Those encamping in front of the tent of the meeting on the east towards the sunrise were Moses, Aaron, and his sons. They would care for the sanctuary on behalf of the Nah Israel. But anyone authorized who approached had to be executed. All the Levites counted by Moses and Aaron at the word of Adonai by their families, inclusive of every male, one month old and upward, were 2,200. Right, I have another thought just here mm -hmm. on the end of 38, but to anyone unauthorized to approach had to be executed. So wow. God was so particular about, about mm -hmm. who could minister. That's right. And in Israel's rebellion later, uh, Jeroboam, the king of Israel, the mm -hmm. northern tribe, mm -hmm. appointed priests who were not from the tribe of Levi, mm -hmm. and they led them 
completely astray. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to have Ooh. gods who God chooses. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Very also, good. Yeah, very good. It also stands on if you rebel and want to take a position that you shouldn't take or where you shouldn't be. Because some people think they should be here, they should be there, they should do this, do that. And if God, God doesn't play. God. If God doesn't choose you, forget it. You sit where you are. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You don't he's force serious. yourself. Yeah, he's serious. <laughs> you don't force yourself to do something that he says for you. That's not for you. That's right? right. That's, so you have to be appointed. You have to be appointed. Mm -hmm. This is where you see blessings. Mm -hmm. yeah, if it's not blessed yeah. by God, you, you cannot see the, the growth right. of the blessing. That's you know right. what I mean? So mm -hmm. don't make a decision, okay, I'm this, I'm that, and you go touch it or you go near it or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Again. Oh, yeah. Work. Yes. And you have to repeat. Right, <clears throat> you know. It's interesting too because it's talking about people have will have to be executed. The hey, Levites did you believe that? immediately. The Levites <laughs> had separated themselves out already the during rebellion. the rebellion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were told, get a sword in hand and go through and then get the mm -hmm. and cleanse this place. Amen. Cleanse. The, the children of Israel. Kill them all. Wow. And this is the way God does it, right away. No court date. Yes. <laughs> no lawyers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no witnesses. It's, it's sad how far we come, how we've got, you know, people, you know, quote unquote, you know, people who in the name of, of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua are living in, you know, and yeah. that's why they you know, and, and in leader and in, you know, leading, you know, churches and ministries and they're just in such sin and, and they're not being held, you know, there's no consequence exactly. to them. No. But there because will be. we have to be politically correct. The yeah. church is required now or some government officials want the church to fit into the political systems. Crazy. Uh, it is. the other way around yeah exactly we have lost it, we have lost it yeah. because we're not getting in this yeah. fear you know we become the tail and not but, the head amen yeah. but there will be a day you know there will yeah. be a day of reckoning by the lord amen yeah. redemption of the firstborn adonai said to moses count every firstborn male of benai israel from one from one month old and upward and make a list of their names in the names <laughs> that's every child every firstborn male of One israel month. that's a whole bunch of kids amen mm -hmm. yes yeah, set the levites apart for me in place of all the firstborn mm -hmm. of benai israel and all the livestock of the levites in place of the firstborn of the livestock of benai israel I am Adonai. Mm. So Moses counted all the firstborn of Benai Israel as Israel as Adonai commanded him. The sum total of the firstborn males of Benai Israel, one month old and upward, listed by name was 22,273. Again, Adonai spoke to Moses saying, take the Levites in place of all the firstborn of Benai Israel and the livestock of the Levites in place of their livestock. The Levites will be mine. I am Israel. I am Adonai. To, to redeem the 273 firstborn of Benai Israel, exceeding the number of the Levites, you are to collect five shekels for each based on the shekel of the sanctuary, which is 20 giraffes. Give the money for the redemption of the extra ones of the firstborn of them to Aaron and his sons. Hence, Moses collected the redemption money for those exceeding the number redeemed by the Levites. Okay, stop a second. Um, it's time we need to go to the oh, service. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you, know, Lord, for the I, reading I have, of your no, word, no, Lord. You know, we're up and outside up. So thank you, Lord, for all to, your good words. Yeah. I was going to say, say This it. was great. I, this, this, this was wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you. See you later. Bye, Walter. Bye, Shalom. Thank you. Bye, Jackie. Bye, Sunny. Bye, y'all. Bye, Linda. Bye. 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 Chapel. Yes. You see, you both here. You know, and Corona. I thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought the operation went south, man. No, man. We didn't see him. Recuperating for.
Yeah, you put them in. A month or two. Take another. All right. Oh, it's time for us to go. Like, like, it's an exciting word. I'm excited. Yeah. I know. Right We've gathered to worship here in the house of the risen sun.